Kelly Poppinga. You just told us that's the correct, the proper yes. pronunciation. But I was giving you a hard time because it's like he's not Polynesian. But, it's you, not but you say it's it's Papinga. Papinga. That's that's Papinga. That's, yes. But the proper is Papinga. Yes. Thank you for that uh, enlightenment. Oh yeah. Over the rake. <laughs> Always yeah. Always willing to do that for you guys. <laughs> also, we have the easiest job ever, right? Yes. I shoot. Get it. You get to talk football, sports all day. That sounds pretty easy to me. Okay. Let's. Talk. I do all the stress. <laughs> I'll stress it all and do all the <laughs> preparation to you know give you a good product on the field or maybe a bad product. Hopefully not that, but it'll give you something to talk about. All right. Let's talk. We football. prefer to talk. Goodness. The good yeah. stuff. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's See the good in the world. That's what we'd like. Do to you do. have a most memorable BYU blowout? I was just thinking about that when you were saying that. And uh, I don't know. I, honestly, as a player, I don't think you remember the blowouts. You remember the games that are close down to the end. And, you know, that's those are the games that you, you know, end up playing the whole entire game. Most of the blowouts, you're sitting on the bench in the fourth quarter and you forget about those, you know. But I, I would have to say one that I didn't play in but I remember was uh, – the UCLA game in 2008 yeah. because I was sitting at home. That was the year after I played. And I remember sitting home and I was, it was kind of like watching that game yesterday. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. It was like every time we, it was like the first play of every series, we were scoring a touchdown. And I was just, you know, I'm just sitting there at home like, are you guys, I mean, is this a Division One football team out here right now that we're playing against or what? But this is UCLA. Yeah. yeah you know, and so, it, I mean, I think that was the whole thing is you, you know, you think of a UCLA team, they, you know, shouldn't be down. I think it was like 41 to nothing at halftime or 34 to zero or something like that. That's crazy. But, but I would have to say that's the one that came to my mind just thinking about it. Let's not bury the lead here. Uh, the Lou Groza and Ray Guy watch list were announced today. You're the special teams coach. How disappointed are you you didn't have any guys on that list? <laughs> <laughs> I am so disappointed. <laughs> I cannot believe they – no. I'm, um, you know, we have brand new guys, really. I mean, Scott – he had an okay last year, so obviously he's not going to be a guy going into the season. But just seeing what he did in spring ball and hearing what he's doing this summer, um, I think he's going to have a really good year. And the thing about Scott that most people don't know about, he's one of the best athletes on our team. We've you guys, heard that did you guys he's know fast. That? Yeah, he can, yeah, he can we've heard that he's fast. Is it he, like a 4-4-5 four, four, or yeah, something? he can fly, man. Wait, and so, so what are you going to do with that? Well, you'll find out. Oh, you'll be find out. Oh, you'll find same. out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we tried to do some things last year. Sometimes it's hard to talk – the head coach into doing some things. We had some things in the works last year, and we practiced a lot, but we just never called him in the game. Hmm. So we'll see. To Hopefully, use his speed. there will be. You know, we'll do some different things on punt this year that I think fans uh, will recognize for sure. And you'll see it day one, and you might see it the very first punt of the season. Oh, yeah! Wow. Oh. Awesome. Yeah. Be ready. Yeah. Kelly Papinga, outside linebackers coach and special teams coach, joining BYU Sports Nation. Uh, right. We were talking about All Americans the other day. And Riley Stevenson was the second team All American at BYU, one of only four uh, All Americans. AP All Americans. AP in, the yeah, in the Bronco Mendenhall Hall era. Wow. Uh, when you look at Scott Arlano and with how athletic he is, it's fitting that we're talking about him. Could he do what Riley did and become a weapon for this football team? Oh, definitely. I think Scott, the thing that Scott has that Riley didn't have is he can, Riley could boom it, but Scott can boom it. I mean, he can really get a hold of it and that thing can go. And so I think the problem with Scott is his consistency. That was Riley's deal. Is Riley was cons We knew when Riley was going out there, we were going to get at least a 40-yard punt that was going to have a hang time of about 4.5 seconds, and it was going to be in the exact spot we wanted it. And we yeah. knew that was going to happen every single time he went out on the field. He was just so consistent. And in all fairness, um, Riley had four years to do that. Yeah. You know, he, he was a starter since his freshman year. And so with Scott – he wasn't super consistent last year, um, and he knows that, and he's working on that. But I think if he just becomes more consistent, he definitely has the leg to change the game and change the field position for our team. And so, um, I mean, we're looking forward to having a big season with Scott. And I know he's been working really hard to, uh, um, you know, have that success this year. And the other thing that's great to have um, – and, uh, you know, I don't know if I should say this, but I'm going to <laughs> – but Lee Johnson in his own time and – you know, he doesn't coach Scott, but they do meet together, and he get, does give him advice. And um, it's great to have a guy like Lee Johnson, a guy that's been, you know, kicked in the NFL for 18 yeah. years or whatever it was, to be able to give Scott some tips and to sit down and watch some film with him. And so um, it's always good to have a guy like that around. One element uh, that uh, maybe was underrated or not discussed as much with punting was the fact that Daniel Sorensen was maybe the best at punt cover oh, yeah. in America. Yeah. How do you how do you replicate that? Do you Is have there another guy? That can yeah. Oh yeah, another guy. definitely. So Craig Bills, Craig Bills was really good in 2012. Um, we took him off a, a little bit last year because he, he had some concussion issues, and we were kind of 
keep, trying to keep him safe to play defense. But Craig is really good at punt cover. Um, Alani Fua is another guy that was really good at punt mm. cover last year. Um, Rob Daniel is a guy that I think will be able to go in that position where um, uh, Daniel Sorensen so was. To go actually catch the ball yes, in some cases? Yes, go catch it. Yeah, and Daniel was – I've never seen a guy – you go back to the 2012 game in San Diego State, and then all the times he did it this past season. I mean – the Tulsa I, game sticks out to me the most in yeah, 2011. Yeah, that would, one like pinned back yeah, every time. Yeah, and so you know a lot has to do with just Riley was great at pooch punting, but some him and Daniel had some connection there to where Daniel just knew exactly where that ball was going to be. And I mean Daniel just had great instincts. He knew exactly. I mean he was a lot of the time running, looking behind him, and you know catching the ball, which is you know super impressive and hard to do. And so we'll get a guy like that. Um, we'll probably have to train somebody and probably not be to the level as Daniel you know, as Daniel was at, but we'll get somebody there. That could very well put Daniel on, on an NFL roster. Oh, definitely. City oh, yeah. Because you know, and I there. think, you know, really that's why um, right after the draft was over, he was immediately picked up by the Chiefs, and I think it was for his special teams play that he had on punt. He was also great on kickoff return for us, and so he'll he'll make a roster um, – depending upon how well he does in, the, in the, you know, the season. And he'll join us on Thursday. Another guy we just talked about, Lee Johnson, going to join the show on nice. Friday. Nice. That'll be Lee. fun. Have you guys ever oh, had him? Lee, yeah. Lee's we, oh, yeah. such he's so oh, yeah. He is the cool guy. Yo, like, he's Mr. Cool, man. That's what <laughs> yeah. I call him, Mr. Cool. <laughs> he, he, and, he and Chad Lewis together. It's like overwhelming energy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Because they both work in uh, oh, yeah. development in the athletic yeah. department. Yeah, yeah. Right? definitely. Yeah, they're trying to raise some money. I guess that's what they're doing, right? In theory, that's yeah. what <laughs> Lee's a guy you want in oh, there. Yeah. They that presented department. at the Y Awards together, and it was – Yeah, they're, all, they're good lot guys. A lot man. of shoulder slapping. Good guys to have in the program right now. Linebacker slash special teams coach Kelly Papinga, BYU football, joining BYU Sports Nation. Uh, Jeremy and I have broken down just about every uh, position group that uh, you can and, and at length, and it seems like there there are some knowns in the linebackers – but there are plenty of unknowns and a ton of hype. I cannot remember this much hype surrounding a BYU football team with transfers coming yeah. in and the recruiting class. So what's the biggest unknown about this BYU football team? Whew, that's a great question. I would say the biggest unknown right now is still who is going to be um, our two inside backers. Mm. Honestly, that's what I say. I think we have good prospects. Manoa Pakula uh, came out of spring as the guy that really stood out to me. And then Zach Stout coming um, back after he'd you know, been gone for a year, um, did a really good job in the spring. But still, I mean, he hadn't played football for a year. So there was a little, you know, he'd lost some strength, lost some agility a little bit. But uh, those are the two guys that I think that are the up and, you know, the front runners right now. But there's a lot of guys, you know, behind them, you know, I.E. Oching, um, a kid that just you know, is getting off a of mission, Philip Amone, uh, Neil Matololo. So yeah. interested to see. Leo Tadoyer there? Uh, as well? Yes, Jeremiah Leutador, who had a good spring. I forgot about him. So there's a lot of guys right there that you don't know quite who's going to be the guy that steps up, but it seems like every year there's there's a guy that steps up. And it, it kind of goes back to the 2010 season. We didn't have – we had a good run of really good linebackers. Um, I think Matt Bauman and uh, Sean Domer were the last ones in 2009. And then we went into this 2010 season very similar – and a guy by the name of Shane Hunter, who yep. now is the GA for us, stepped up and had a great season. And, his uh, senior year. His One senior year, the... exactly. And uh, and then a guy by the name of Brandon Ogletree <laughs> uh, kind of came up that season. Mr. Nobody, He's really Mr. Yeah. Clean. Oh, yeah, yeah, Mr. <laughs> Clean. But nobody knew about Brandon. I mean, we did as coaches, and we knew that he was going to be pretty good. And so somebody will step up, and it will probably be somebody that ends up having a great career here at BYU. Uh, but we're not quite sure who that you know who those two guys are going to be quite yet. Now we look at the outside. Th those are the inside linebackers. Your guys, the outside linebackers, you know what you've got in Alani Fua, expected to be a leader now on this team. You've made the switch with Bronson Kafusi. Is Bronson expected to start at Connecticut? Like, if you played today, would he be the starter? He, yeah, he better be. Or, <laughs> I mean, shoot, he went through spring ball, and he uh, you know, had a great spring, and he's been training like a machine and getting to know the defense and understanding all the schemes and everything. And so I think that uh, – you know, it's his job to lose at this point. You know, I'm not going to anoint him as the starter. And even Alani, I, right. I hate to do that um, because there might be somebody that comes in from behind and surprises, and those guys might not show sure. up. You know, and so sure. as a coach, you always want to – yeah, you'll, those guys will be the two starters to start day one of fall camp. But we'll see how they do um, during fall camp and then how the others do behind them. And, uh, you know, guys like Fred Warner, guys like Tyler Cook, guys like Troy Hines that – will be home off his mission next week. So He was a stud in yeah. high school. Yeah, that So dude. he's going to have 
two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what Bronson did. Yeah. He got home way late, and then he actually yeah. played. Yeah. And so we, you know, I, I was on the radio earlier this morning with another station. I was kind of explaining there's nobody else in the country um, that does a better job with return missionaries, obviously, because we have the most. So we better do the best. But we have a great plan of having, having to get those guys back into shape, making sure we're not pushing them too fast, you know, because we don't want any setbacks with those guys. We want to make sure we're easing them in and getting them, you know, their legs right and all that stuff. So we look forward to Troy getting back. And like you were saying, he was a stud in high school. And he, uh, I got a picture a couple of weeks ago of him and he's just all jacked up, you know, lifting in the gym. And I was like, dang, man, he looked like he was ready to play. Now, I don't know if he can run at all, but he sure right. looks the part. The so. Fui Vakapuna. Exactly. He was, on the, he was on the Fui Vakapuna mission, yeah. just living in Gold's gym, basically. <laughs> Did you I, even teach anybody? Yeah. Fui, Fui? Do what you were you Troy, doing? Do you want Troy Hines to play this year? Uh, I want him to play this year if he's ready to play. And that's, you know, what I always say about return missionaries. If, if they're ready to play, I want them to play. If they're not ready to play, I would hate to play them. And that kind of happened last year a little bit with Sai Tautu. Sai Tautu wasn't quite ready to play. He very similar. He came home late June and uh, just wasn't quite ready. And uh, got some injuries and some setbacks. And that ended up throwing him in there a couple, you know, for a couple plays in Wisconsin and some other uh, games. And he just wasn't quite ready. And it, Sai had a great spring. And so that's it just goes to show, you know, you give them a couple months, uh, half a year, and those guys will get themselves ready. And Cy had a great spring, and he's another guy um, in front of those freshmen probably that, you know, I'm probably looking forward to the most to see how he develops and, you know, having a role on the defense this year. Which position is he at, I guess? He's at Will Linebacker. Will, okay. Yep. Is Bronson's speed a concern for No, you? not at all. And I will say that up front. That guy is fast. <laughs> You've been asked this before. Yes. Because that's what people talk yeah, about. And they, I'm like, well, let's ask, let's they, ask Kelly. Uh, there was this play in spring ball, and people will think I'm crazy. But Taysom dropped back to pass, and he started rolling out to the field. Bronson came from the backside. Taysom running full speed, sprinting out to the field, and Bronson caught him from behind. So right there, <laughs> that's when my questions were all answered. How fast is Bronson yeah, Gafusi? He's pretty fast, man. I think, and, you know, people have seen him on the basketball court. I think people just see him, they think D lineman. They think this big, you know, 285 pounds. Well, Bronson's down to 265 now. Mm -hmm. He's dropped 20 pounds and uh, is moving super well. And uh, I, I just think BYU fans are going to be very pleasantly surprised when he gets on the field. And you moved him to linebacker because I'm d guessing that you wanted to utilize that speed in some way. Right? Yeah, exactly. And so it just really putting him in a position to be more successful and to help our team and really putting him in a position that highlights who he is. But our defense, those are the stuff. I mean, you look at the last nine years since Coach Menhall's been here, They're the, guys. the outside backers – and the inside backers. They, no, just, <laughs> <laughs> those are the guys that make the plays. Especially, the, I mean, you look at just the outside backers that we've put in the NFL in the last 10 years. There's been, I think, seven of them that we've counted of in the last 10 years. And, uh, you know, that's just how our defense, it's based around those guys coming off the edge, rushing the quarterback, putting them in different situations, lining them up in different places so the defense or the offenses never have quite a feel of where they're going to be. And it's just putting them in a situation to use their talents to make plays. Six eight six five on the edge is is awfully, is awfully enticing, yes. isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah. And so I mean you're <laughs> gonna have Bronson, who I think is just under six eight, he's six seven and something, and then Alani is six five, just under six six. And so those two guys, and then Troy Hines is six five, Fred Warner's six four. Um Troy, shoot, I shouldn't have said that. Fred Warner is six four. Sorry about that. Is Troy Warner someone to No, uh, don't worry about that. 6'4". 6'4 <laughs> <Six four. laughs> uh, is Fred Warner. And, uh, and compliance you know, is going to yeah, send you seriously. an email. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we have some other – we have height out there, which is, you know, what I'm trying to say, which is good. And uh, it's always – I think good for leverage, um, get separation. When you're a pass rusher, you always want to have great leverage to get separation for the offensive tackle. So, you know, long arms, it's, it's going to be great to have those guys out Breaking there. Breaking news, the linebacking core at BYU <laughs> is deep again. Yeah. You know, yeah. what else who, is new? Who was it that told us that – maybe it was Taysom. I, I, I don't remember, but that when he looks to Bronson's side – that he immediately thinks, well, that's not open. <laughs> just because of how yeah. big he is. Is yeah. that going to really – do yeah. you think that will really happen with some quarterback? I, yeah, I think a lot of the time teams 
go away from taller guys, especially quarterbacks, because they can get their hands up, especially in three-step game. I mean, you guys remember the first play of the Utah State game. Yes. And really, that's all it was. It was a three-step pass. Kyle getting his hands up in the passing lane and scoring a touchdown. Well, with Bronson, he should be able to do that a lot. He did that a lot at D-line. It's just getting his hands up in the passing lane, being able to knock down balls. And so it's just – Whether a, he's forward or backward. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there was Mexico one. Mexico State, he was backward yeah. and jumped up. Well, he had one, I think it was in the Virginia game this last year too, where he – he was kind of rushing, kind of put his hand behind him like that, and, you know, luckily hit the ball. So just, you know, that's another advantage of having a big, tall guy on the edge of just getting your hands up in the passing lane when they're trying to do, you know, three-step quick passing game. The, the Kafusi smash, I believe, is, is what we call that. <laughs> uh, you took a trip to visit the 49ers, and uh, there was some enthusiasm on, that, on Twitter about that. What, what did you experience in San Francisco that uh, made BYU football better? Man, that they uh, are really good. <laughs> they have really good players. Um, and really what uh, the main thing I think that we brought back is their schemes, their scheme and our scheme are very similar. And a lot of times we go on these visits, we've been to the Steelers, we've been to the Texans, um, and uh, you know now the 49ers, that's what we've done in the last three years. And really a lot of the time it's going there, and not so much getting new ideas, but kind of confirming to us that we're doing the right stuff. Mm -hmm. And really, that was one of the main things that we did when we went to the 49ers is they're doing a lot of the same stuff that we're doing. That kind of just makes us feel like, okay, we're on the right track. They do, you know, a couple things. So make a couple tweaks here and there to make it better, but we're not going out there to completely be the 49ers and to completely change our defense to what they do. It's more of just kind of making sure we know that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Um, yeah, there's maybe some adjustments that we can make here and there um, with a couple tags and some coverages and things like that. But I think for the most part, it was just to go out there, reaffirm to us that we're on the right track. And then also, we got a couple new coverage concepts that we hadn't used before. Um, we started doing some more man-free stuff last year. Um, you know, I don't know if fans noticed that. We ran more man last year than we had in the last eight years. Hmm. And, you know, most fans probably didn't ever notice that. Um, we'll probably um, maybe – add on to that this year, do continue to build up a little more man. But our base is our, our zone coverage, which we've been really good at. So it's just a great compliment to every now and again match up just man-to-man, -man, mano y mano and go. And we have more guys to do that. Our DBs are deeper than – I mean, you guys mentioned, you yeah. know, um, Harvey Jackson – and yeah, uh, you know, you know, there's him coming in, and then Jordan Johnson coming off of an ACL, and you know, Trent Tremell coming off an ACL, yeah. and then you got Rob Daniel coming back, and Craig Bills, and Daniel or uh, Dallin Levitt, and you, so you got, I mean, we got some guys that we haven't had before, and uh, and so that kind of warrants you to be able to play a little more man-to-man -man coverage. Seahawks next year? No, <laughs> <laughs> just, just because they're they're four they're a four three team. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they run a lot of cover two. We don't run a much cover two, and so uh, denied. Yeah, that's what just happened. Yeah. Right there. So you know, <laughs> no. I, you know, no. we try to we we try to go to a three four team. Yeah. And the other yeah. thing is, Coach Menahal always wants to go to a team where there's baseball. So get a little Does football he? in, and then he we likes baseball. Yeah. So we we went to a Houston Astros game. Once he's a huge Pitch, uh, Pittsburgh Pirates fan. Really. So last year when we were in Pittsburgh, what? went to a Pirates game. It's random. Yeah, random. Yeah. You know, Coach Menahal was a better baseball player than a football player. Most people don't know that. Did not know that. Yeah. So we're going to have to we ask have, him yeah. about that the next time now. we talk. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly, great to have you with us. Thanks yeah. for the update. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, if you couldn't tell, we're excited about football. Oh, yeah. Out. So am I, man. <laughs> so am I. Great to, have, great to be with you guys today. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs>